Welcome my fellow Vikings to the most awesome video on taming animals in Valheim. <laughs> if you're tired of chasing after your dinner with a pointy stick like a caveman, then you've come to the right place. Today I will teach you how to become the Dr. Doolittle of Valheim, the board whisperer of the Nine Realms. As of the making of this video, there are currently four creatures you can domesticate and breed, but only three of those creatures you actively have to find and tame. Boars, wolves and locks are found in the wild and need to be tamed, while chickens are hatched from eggs, which automatically makes them tamed. So let us focus on the first three and I will explain how to get chickens after that. Taming animals in Valheim is generally the same no matter which one you go for. There are of course a few differences, for example the biome they are found in and what food is needed to start the taming process. So let us begin with the first step. While it is possible to tame animals in the wild, it is better to capture an enclosed one. A simple enclosure will do, you just have to make sure there is an access point to lead the animal into. It is important to note that once you trap the animal, it will try to escape and it will do that by attacking the structure that is holding it. And each animal will do more damage than the other. A round pole fence or a wooden wall should be enough to hold a boar, but if you're trying to capture a wolf or a lox, then stronger walls such as stone would be better suited. I prefer to capture wolves and locks into the holes I dug out of the terrain. Take note that when digging pens out of terrain, you should make sure that the edges are sharp and clean. That will avoid your animals to climb out. I made a complete guide on terrain manipulation, which I will link in the description. Once you have prepared the enclosure, it is time to lure the animal in there, which should be pretty easy, as all three of them will aggro on you when you get too close, so you can easily have them follow you into the pen. If you are using terrain shaped pens, there are a few ways you can get them into it. You can either use a harpoon, but you will need to find chitin from the leviathans in the oceans to craft it. And harpoons also damage the animals, so you risk killing them when having to repeat that too much. Another way is to push them into the pits by using your shield. You can either push them or parry them, but your shield might not be strong enough depending a bit on how advanced you are. Or you can lure them onto a scaffolding above the pit and break it once they are on top of it, which is my preferred way. You can build a very simple floor structure out of four floors, it doesn't have to be complicated. And once the animal is on top of that scaffolding, you simply break the floor that is supporting it all and voila, your animal is caught. Now the animal is caught, we move out of its eyesight and let it calm down. It can take a few seconds for that to happen. If you build a pen, you will notice it will focus its frustration on the enclosure. If you use the correct materials, you should normally not worry about them breaking out, but you can always check the strength of your walls by hovering over them while holding the hammer. Okay, let us talk about the conditions needed to get the taming started. First, the creature should not be in an alerted state, which is why we are hiding out of its eyesight. Second, the creature should have food inside the pen. And thirdly, a player should be nearby the taming animal. It doesn't have to be you, but there should be someone around the animal. So the animal can be in different states, which are calm, aware and alerted. Being alerted can result in different behaviors, either being aggressive, frightened or fleeing, which is most of the time the same. Only two of these states allow your animal to eat and tame, which are calm and aware. There are a few indicators that show you in what spectrum of interaction they are. If there is no indicator at all, your creature is calm and unaware of any dangers. The yellow indicator makes clear the animal is aware of noise or nearby enemies and might be alerted soon. The red exclamation mark means it's alerted and depending on what situation it is in, it will be either aggressive or fleeing. Depending if you're taming a boar, a wolf or a lox, there are a few external factors that can alert the animal. Apart from a clear line of sight, excessive noise can also alert them. So running around their pen, building, chopping trees and mining nearby, all will cause them to be either aware or alerted. Untamed boars are also afraid of fire, so having torches or fire nearby will cause them to panic. I tend to keep a distance of 10 meters between the taming boar and any fire source. Normally every wild animal is hungry, so once you manage to keep it calm, it will go looking for food. You will have to provide that food and throw it inside the pen. Be sure the food is inside a radius of 10 meters so the animals can find it. Of course, each animal has its own diet and it will need to be fed the right food. So be sure to be prepared and have the correct food with you, especially if you go out taming start wolves. And I will have more on that later. 
While in ideal condition, each taming animal only needs 3 pieces of food to complete the taming process, I prefer to give more just to ensure that there are no interruptions. You can drop food in stacks, there is no need to divide it. Animals will not tame when you are not nearby. It's not because they like you watching, it is just you need to keep the area active. As a general rule of thumb, you should still see your taming animals from wherever you are. That distance is approximately 64 meters. When all three of these conditions are fulfilled, your animals will start taming. You will notice that the taming starts when small yellow or green hearts start floating above them. In ideal conditions, this will take a minimum of 30 minutes. Every time one of these conditions is interrupted, it will pause the taming process until all the three conditions are fulfilled once again. This can result in taking much longer than just 30 minutes, so you want to make sure that the process goes uninterrupted. Some important suggestions you should take into account while taming. Sleeping does not speed up taming. The only thing that will happen is that your animals will eat again because a new day resets the hunger status of animals. Enemies can interrupt the process as well. Without wanting to go too deep into this topic, you can divide all creatures in Valheim into factions. The boar, for example, is part of the forest faction. Members of different factions will fight each other, so for example a skeleton, which is part of the undead faction, will attack a boar. This means when a skeleton comes near your taming boars, it will alert them and pause the taming process. You can check the percentage of how far the taming process is by simply sneaking up to the animals and hovering your cursor over them. There you can see the status and the percentage of the current taming process. Once the animal is tamed, you will hear a sound and a notification on your screen letting you know that the animal is tamed. Now the tamed animal will no longer be aggravated by you and you can start the breeding process. But that is not the only thing that happens. As soon as an animal is tamed, it is no longer belonging to its original faction. Now it has joined your faction. That means every other faction will now try to kill your tamed animals when possible. Except of course the ones of the same species. For example, a wild boar will not attack a tamed boar and vice versa. The same for wolves and locks, otherwise it would be very difficult to tame two wolves in the same pen. Other little things that happen are, tamed boars will no longer be afraid of fire, grown tamed wolves will no longer howl, and you can now name your tames. Apart from breeding, which we will cover in a second, you can also use some of them for other purposes. Wolves can be used to place and guard locations, or have them follow you and join you in battle. A pack of wolves really can help you survive when exploring. Locks can be ridden. You just need to craft yourself a saddle, but for that you will need to have unlocked some later stage materials. So that leaves us with the chickens. As stated before, these do actually not need any taming, you just need to buy the eggs. Once you have defeated the fourth boss in Valheim, Jaglut, you will be able to visit the Haldor and buy eggs from him. These are pretty pricey, so hopefully you got the dough. If you did not find Haldor yet by now, it might be time to start looking for him. Perhaps I should make a video about this and once I'll do, I'll share a link in the description of the video. Of course you will need two chickens to be able to breed them, so you will have to purchase two eggs. Once home, we can start hatching them. To be able to hatch the eggs, we need to meet two conditions. The eggs need to be sheltered and they need to be next to a heat source. While you could just drop your eggs next to any heat source like a campfire or a heart, you might want to remember how costly these were. You don't really want to turn 1500 coins into a single crisp nugget. In my experience, I prefer to build a little barrier between my fire and my eggs, as once they hatch, the chicks are pretty mobile and will jump into the flames. Okay, now that we have set up the area, we can put the eggs under a roof near a fire. You can see if the eggs are starting to hatch when the text changes from too cold to warm and the sparkling also disappears. You cannot hatch eggs in stacks, so you will have to split them up when dropping them on the floor. It will take 30 minutes of uninterrupted warm eggs for them to hatch into a chick. If your fire by any chance goes out or the shelter disappears, then the counter is reset and you will have to start from 30 minutes again when the two conditions are fixed. Once the chick is hatched, it will take 50 minutes for it to grow up into a hen. Now, before we talk about breeding, we should also cover the taming of start wolves. 1 and 2 star wolves are not a regular occurrence, they are pretty rare and only appear during the night. So you need to go and explore the mountains during the night and hopefully find and capture one of these without dying. Because 2 star wolves really pack a punch. As stated before, you should be very prepared for this. 
make sure you have a raw meat on you and also perhaps have some holes in the area where you can lure them in. I would also advise you to have stamina and health potions and great food on you so you have the highest stats available. Also try to get the maximum rested buff and enable Ecti's Forsaken power. A knight only lasts 9 minutes, at least in the unmodded version of the game, so that is a pretty short time to find and capture a high-end wolf. When I started this game, I was told that you need to get the taming process started before the night is over. That would mean if you captured a 1 or 2 star wolf but you were not able to get the taming started, the wolf would go in fleeing mode and will no longer be able to be tamed during the day. Much similar to when you try to tame a wolf from a wolf raid, it does not work because the wolf is either hunting or fleeing. Now in my test that was not exactly the case, as I could still start taming night wolves even when the day already started. The only thing I should not do was leaving the area before the taming had begun, otherwise it would despawn. I'm just giving you both pieces of this information, just in case you catch a start wolf and the night is over, I would still advise you to try feeding the wolf anyway and see if you can get it tamed. As soon as green hearts show up, you should be fine. Now if you're wondering why it's so important to catch, tame and breed start animals, then the answer is pretty straightforward. They are of better quality. When you come across any creature in Valheim that has 1 or 2 stars, they will be tougher to beat, they will do more damage and they will give you much more resources when killed. Therefore having tamed animals with star rating is much better as they will have more hit points and harder to kill, they will do more damage when you use them for defending or fighting and they will give you much more resources when killing them. Currently there are only two creatures that can be tamed that have star ratings and that's the boar and the wolves. Both lox and chickens do not have any star ratings. When breeding these start animals, their offspring will inherit the star rating of their parent. This means you can make sure you have only two star offspring. Just to be clear, the offspring will inherit the rating of the parent that spawned them. So if you have a two star boar and a zero star boar and they breed, then the two star boar will spawn two star piggies and the zero star boar will spawn zero star piggies. Therefore, you will see many players kill off the lower rate teams once they have a couple of higher ranked animals. And yes, there are no different genders in these animals, all animals can be pregnant. Alright, time to talk about the birds and the bees. You see, when an unspecified gender boar and an unspecified gender boar love each other very much. All kidding aside, there are a few conditions before tames start breeding. There are five in total. The first three we already know, as they are the same when taming. The creature should not be in alerted state, the creature should be fed and the player should be nearby the animals. The two other conditions are basic biology. You need two animals to get breeding. That means both animals must meet the three previous conditions as well. And they need of course to meet the final condition, which is it cannot be crowded to get it on. There is a limit of how many creatures can live in a certain area together that might block them from breeding. For boars the limit is 5 boars within 10 meters. For wolves that is 4 within 10 meters. For locks that is 4 within 20 meters. And for chickens it is about 14 within 12 meters. If there are that much creatures in that area, they will no longer breed. Now take note that eggs also count to that number, so even if you only have 8 chickens in a pen, 6 eggs will still count towards that 14. This is why high located breeding setups like these are so popular. Eggs themselves however are not limited at all and will hatch no matter how many chickens are already in that area. So these are the 5 conditions you need to take care of and for the rest you should not be too much involved with the breeding. You will notice the breeding has started when pink hearts start to appear in the pen. The pink hearts however don't mean the animal is pregnant yet. Now I had to look this up on Wikipedia. It seems every time you see pink hearts appear, an animal has received a love point. Now boars, wolves and chickens have three love points that need to be received before the animal is pregnant. And for locks that is four love points. Once that is fulfilled, the animal is pregnant and will be spawning offspring soon. For wolves and boars, this is one minute from pregnancy. For chickens that is 60 to 90 seconds and locks are pregnant for a whopping 2 minutes. Once the offspring is born it will take them some time to grow up. While eggs need to hatch first both piglets, pups and chickens will take 50 minutes to grow up. Locks will take 100 minutes to grow up. There is no need for you to be around for the young to grow up, you only need to be in the active area for taming and breeding. Once the offspring is born you can leave and explore. As shown before, to get more efficient breeding, many players built these tall breeders to keep the process going. While building these breeders, you should also take into account the formerly mentioned distances and numbers of animals in an area. 
It can also be very challenging to get your animal to eat as they need to be able to reach the food, which can be very frustrating because sometimes the location can be very finicky. If you decide to build one of these breeders, don't give up hope when things don't work out and try to figure out what went wrong. And you can always talk with other players and see how they solved it. You also want to make sure to protect your tames, at least the parents. Several boss raids can kill your precious tames and can really hurt if it took you a long time to find and tame them. Be sure to have the parents in a covered room without windows or at least lockable shutters. You will thank me later. One other thing you should take into account is that the lock stops eating when they are in a covered area when the roof is too low. According to Wikipedia, locks have the same pathfinding as trolls, so they need higher roofs. Finally, if you want to kill your tames, you have two options. You either can craft yourself a butcher knife, which you need for tin for, or if you're not that advanced yet, you can also enable friendly fire, which will allow you to kill your tamed creatures. Alright everyone, that wraps up our guide on taming and breeding in the incredible world of Valheim. If you found this information helpful, make sure to hit that thumbs up to show your appreciation. I have been putting even more informative content like this, so if you're hungry for more, simply click on one of the videos appearing on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos, have an absolute fantastic day, goodbye for now.